All right, hey everybody, we're back. This is Rick with Game Trade Media live from PAX Unplugged, the inaugural event, yeah. if you will. And I've got Mike here from Lone Shark Games. Mike, thank you so much for coming over and talking with us about Apocrypha. Yeah, uh, well, I'm excited to be here. I mean, this first PAX Unplugged. Right. It's been uh, leading up to this for a long time. We have a show of PAX all to ourselves. Uh, and people are just digging it. it is, Philadelphia has been a great host. Pax guys have done real well. It's been really good for us. Oh, I, I agree. And the crowd has been amazing. Yeah, they um, they seem real happy that we're here. Yeah, and for the first day, a decent size. Tomorrow it's on. It's yeah. uh, sold out. Yeah, so it's gonna be crazy. And a marathon coming. And a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, some of those runners will find their way in here. That'd be That's great. That's right. Yeah. All right. So tell us a little bit about what an adventure card game is. Sure. So. Uh, a couple years ago, I released a game called the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game. It did all right. Um, it uh, had a lot of copies sold. People people seemed to like it. Uh, it was a uh, you know a way to play an RPG without actually having to do all of the the work. Sure. Right. You didn't have to have anybody you know taking detailed notes and planning storylines and all that. Right. So that was that, uh, and people were like, "Yeah, but why don't you make an RPG?" out of the Pathfinder Adventure card game. Hmm. And we're like, well, Paizo actually kind of has an RPG they're pretty happy with. Right, yeah, right? So we're weird. Not, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> but in the back of my head, I always knew that the Adventure card game could be also an RPG. Okay. So we made, when we first made the design of the Pathfinder Adventure card game, we didn't have Pathfinder. So we just made a horror universe okay. that we could just play in. Sure. We need something to play in. You don't want to just flip over and say monster plus one. You want to play against something, right? Right. So we made this horror universe, uh, modern day, uh, called Saints of the Apocalypse. Uh, and it, we really liked it. It was, uh, it was both like scary, but also a little funny. Sure. Uh, and so we said, now that we did Pathfinder and everybody seemed to like it, what if we did an adventure card game that was set in that horror universe that we really love and simultaneously make a card game that you can play against the game, but also as a full-on RPG? Wow. Okay. And so I love running this thing as an RPG, um, but I also am perfectly happy to put that side of me uh, on hold and just play against the game and have a good time. Okay, so let's talk about how one plays against this game. Sure. And so the, has a good time. The, the sort of simpler method is just play against the threats in the game, right? Okay. So, so this is a game that's very deep. Uh, over the three boxes, it has 99 missions in it. Oh my lord. They all play very differently. Okay. They have these structure cards that, that let you do things differently on every mission. You might win a different way, you might lose a different way, you might have to investigate a different way, all that kind of stuff. But fundamentally, you go around looking you have a character, you, uh, it's called a saint. Okay. And the saints uh, have a problem. They're crackpots. Oh, everybody, right. everybody who listens to them goes, I don't know what you're smoking, man. Okay. Talking about all these monsters in the world. Everything's fine. Everything's okay. fine. It's not fine. It's not. Not fine. <laughs> uh, I'm looking and I see that we have Gabriel Vargas. Yeah, Gabriella, Gabriella uh, Vargas. Vargas. She's a one percenter. You know, the 99% of the bikers are lawful, right. law-abiding citizens. She doesn't know that. She doesn't know that. Yeah. Uh, and then Dr. Z's. He's an unlicensed necrosurgeon. Wow. Well, makes sense. Yeah. Well, there's not a lot of licenses available for that. Um, Frank, Frank, uh, Frank Block is a uh, bad cop. Uh, Deanna Jones, she's the world's luckiest grandma. Deanna Jones. Yeah. That's a very familiar name. Yes. We made. We decided that after all these years, the Deanna Jones Award should have a Deanna Jones Can I in see a game. That one? Yeah. So we made her the world's luckiest grandma. She always that wins. That is awesome. Yeah. Look at uh, that. Showed her to Matt Forbeck, who helped me write this game. He was like, oh, it's so adorable. Um, Matt is an awesome, awesome yeah. guy. And then we got Love tons him. more characters. There's 10 characters in this game, uh, and then four more in each one. Um, from like the roller derby queen, 13 year old roller derby queen, uh, Ruby Doomsday, to uh, the um, uh, gentleman cat burglar, Matthew uh, Lockhart, you know, That's and so awesome. on. So, all these characters, all these saints are uh, aware of the monsters in the universe. Uh, the monsters are aware of them, okay. which is bad for them. And uh, they go around trying to put a stop to the bad guys 
uh, activities. Uh, the bad guys have very different kinds of activities. Some of them uh, just want to be monsters. They just sure. want to do what they do. Um, and others are really concerned about the fact that others of them are about to start the apocalypse. Uh -oh. And the one thing these saints can agree on is they're, they're kind of screwed up in the head, but they all agree that an apocalypse would be bad. Okay. They're, they're, they're At like, least they have one thing. They have one thing. They get together, they can talk about it. We're all on the same side of the world not ending. Right. We, yeah. want, we, we want to keep it that way. That's right. All so right. that's why the world's luckiest grandma can hang out with the, you know, the outlaw biker. Right. Is because they're just, like, they got one thing in common and they're going to make it work. So uh, all these cards, there's a ton of cards in the game. There's like 600 in the base set. And uh, wow. uh, there's, there's uh, like, uh, I think 400 plus in each expansion. Um, so it's like 1,500 cards when it's all done. That is awesome. There's 100 plus pages of story in the game. Okay. Uh, we wrote like crazy on this game. Uh, we had some of our best friends help us, people like Patrick Rothfuss, Matt Forbeck, uh, Bruce Cordell, um, Aaron Evans, Kids Johnson, all these people who are just amazing writers. Jer oh, our host, Jerry Holkins. Okay. Yeah, uh, Tycho from Penny Arcade. And um, just got a really crazy, weird vibe about the whole thing. Um, it's very much feels like it's set today. All the there's in jokes and, and Easter eggs throughout the game. Um, hundreds of them. We can't even keep track of them all. Sure. And uh, but yeah, that's I mean that's basically the game. The the game uh, guns along really fast. Okay. It, it cleans itself up. There's lots of cooperation. Uh, and um, and things get weird. Like one of the sort of defining mechanics of the game is that when you help somebody and you have a lot of opportunities to do so, mm -hmm. that makes their thing they're doing get a lot stranger. Okay. And they're like, well, how did this happen? Well, you helped me. Yeah, you let yeah. everybody know, right? Nice. So, uh, so yeah, so this is the first box. It's called The World. The next two boxes are the flesh and the devil. Okay. And they'll be out a little later. Um, but we got, yeah, I mean, we got got a good start. We got it out at Gen Con. People seem to really like it. Right. And um, I, I remember seeing all the uh, all the uh, advertisement of it at Gen Con. Yeah. And uh, it didn't seem like they were you guys were not, uh, short of a crowd. No, we all always the time. we're <laughs> very lucky. I I think you know we God bless our fans, right? But. But they'll give any strange thing we make a try. Absolutely. Right? Like, they'll come over and they'll just like, I don't know what you were thinking when you made this, but I am glad you I'm glad you at least decided to push the boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we've got that. And we, and over in our booth, we've got our next games, The Ninth World, which is our game with Monty Cook Games, yep. and then Thorn Watch, which is our game with the Penny Arcade folks. Nice. So, you know, we're underway. We're going to see how it goes. We've got a lot of cool stuff coming out. Now, this... If you're here at PAX and you're watching this uh, after hours back in the room and you want to be like, oh, I'm going to stop by that yeah. booth. What booth number are you on? We are at 708. And can I say a little thing Please, about that? absolutely. Okay, so we have sign-ups at our booth. So we have a whole demo area of 10 tables that you can play this game and Thornwatch and so on. Um, if you sign up early, uh, you can play with one of the designers oh, wow. of the game, running the RPG version of Apocrypha or, or game mastering um, Thornwatch for you. Okay. And so people have been really excited about that. I've gotten to meet some really cool people that way. I love just sitting down and playing the game with folks. Yes. And uh, they come over and they're like, I can't believe you're the person running the game. <laughs> I'm like, well, why wouldn't I be? That's right. why. Like, I like being here and doing this. That is so cool. So another benefit of stopping by the Lone Shark game uh, booth, yep. you get to play with designers. Yeah, absolutely. How cool is that? Yep. Booth 708. We'd 708. love to see you. All right. So there you guys have it. Uh, we have Apocrypha, which is a Lone Shark Games, and you can find more information out about all of your guys' products at, at LoneSharkGames.com. There you have it. And also on their Facebook page and probably every other social media platform. We we do we do talk a lot. Yeah, you're on a lot of social media. <laughs> we, so we, we natter on a lot. So go check them out. Like all their stuff so you don't miss out on anything. Right. Also, we'd like to say a big thank you to Carolina Game Tables for letting us use Look this, at this streamer table here this weekend. It is beautiful. It is amazing. Uh, if you're here, go stop by their booth as well. If you're not, check them out on Facebook and online at their website as well. And last but not least, I have a card. Oh, oh, oh what is it? What is it? 
So we are doing a big giveaway all weekend here. What you're going to do is uh, if you stop by the booth, if you're here at PAX Unplugged, stop by the booth, pick up one of the cards, follow the QR code to the, to the website, and enter to win this huge prize pack right oh, here. Oh, look, you got some Pathfinder in there. Yeah, I approve of that. got a lot of, of stuff. Got a lot of stuff. And we're going to be uh, probably adding some more things to this as the weekend goes on. The, the winner will be announced Wednesday live here on Game Trade Media, so stay tuned for that. And uh, thanks, Mike. Yeah, thanks, Rick. We appreciate your time, and yeah. we will see you guys soon. We'll see you on the show. At least. See you here. All right, everybody. Have a good afternoon. Don't forget to subscribe to Game Trade Media. Leave a like and comment on what videos you'd like to see next.